Lord, today is a great day. Are you excited? I am so excited. Today is Mother's Day, and we know that our God will do great things. So today, I want to welcome you to Oliver Bible Church at Inspiration Center. We are here today to celebrate our mothers and to hear the word of God. And for those online, please engage with us through our online platforms. Send us your questions, your testimonies, and we'll get back to you. I know that our God will do you good for being part of our celebration of mothers today. Shall we stand as we pray? Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We worship you. We thank you for bringing us to this great day. Lord, King of glory, let your word be made manifest in our lives. As we have come, we will go blessed. We will go empowered. We will go strengthened in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for today's service. And we declare that today's, the purpose of today's service will be established in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. We worship you. Ancient of days, we give you glory. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be the Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise the name of Jesus. Ndine Mama. And all the men and all the fathers in the house, thank you for helping us to be women. Hallelujah. Thank you, our children, our husbands, our brothers, our uncles. Thank you for helping us to be women. Praise the Lord. And the planning team for this year's Mother's Day, thank you so much, Deaconess Josephine and her team, Deaconess Fumi, all those that planned everything that has happened here this morning. God bless you richly and increase you in your talents in Jesus' name. And I want to thank all those. I started receiving Mother's Day gifts since yesterday. Been receiving gifts. And this morning as I was dressing up, somebody gave me this one. And then I saw the notes. Rotachi, Chidi, Chidube Mani Funanya, and Owen. I said, oh, I'm wearing it to church today. So this is my Mother's Day gift this morning. Thank you all, the children's department, the women, the men. Thank you for appreciating us. Bless, I just want to bless the name of the Lord Most High. You have not seen us all. This is not all there is about the women in Olivet Bible Church. You will see more of us in greater glory in Jesus' name. Once again, happy Mother's Day to all the women in the house. Praise the Lord. Our theme for this year's Mother's Day, incidentally, the planning team planned everything. I wasn't, it's only uh, once I attended their me meeting. They just called me to brief me concerning what they were doing, but the women planned everything, and it has come out beautiful. Our theme for this year's Mother's Day is the uncommon woman. Uncommon woman. So I'm basing my message this morning. By God's grace, I intend to be brief. My message is in search of the uncommon woman. So let's see if we can search out the uncommon woman from the Bible. Proverbs chapter 31, I will read verse 10. Proverbs 31, verse 10, the A, and then later I will still read through the whole Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, verse 10A, he said, 
Who can find a virtuous woman? So join me in this journey this morning as we search for the uncommon woman, the virtuous woman. Uncommon is rare, unusual, remarkable, exceptional, is different, is separate from what is already known. Uncommon is not something that you see every day. Simple, uncommon is not common. So who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find the uncommon woman? I read the rest of Proverbs 31, 10 to the end. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her worth is far above rubies. Her, the heart of her husband safely trusts her, so she will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly walks with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it's yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. She gets herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good. And her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful. Beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Praise the name of Jesus. We were actually meant to start the uh, Mother's Day program on last Wednesday, but because of the fast, we moved the Wednesday program to coming Wednesday. So this week, Wednesday, is the conclusion of our Mother's Day. Please come around 6 p.m. service time, so we will conclude what we started. And our program for yesterday morning, we moved it on t in the night. We had a wonderful time praying together last night. Praise the Lord. In search of the uncommon woman. Where we have read, that was our recitation. That was where our drama was uh, based on. If you look at that portion of the scripture, I divided it into three areas that the Bible was looking at concerning the uncommon woman. Her relationship. Her relationship with God, with her husband, with her children, with her maid servant, her household, and even the less privileged of the society. Then her economy, that's the work of her hands. The Bible talks so much about the work of her hands. And then herself, what she does or what she did with herself. She, in all of these things, she didn't neglect herself. 
verse 22 of that Proverbs 23. It says, she makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. So she didn't lose herself in all the other things she was doing. She was doing everything she needed to do and she was still taking care of herself. Educating herself, taking care of her skills, doing a lot of other things for herself. The uncommon woman, therefore, is whole. She is purposeful. She is intentional. She is not an anyhow woman. Remember, she is rare. What then does it mean to be purposeful? And that's where we are headed this morning. There is a need for self-rediscovery for every woman in order to attain and live a purposeful life. There is need for us to have self-rediscovery so that we can attain and live a purposeful life. When you live a life of purpose, you join the league of uncommon women. Uncommon women. When your life is purposeful. Esther chapter 4 verse 14. Can I have it here quickly? Esther 4 14. The last portion of it. He said, yeah, um, the C part. He said, yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this purpose. Whether you're here today for such a time as this. Whether you're existing today for such a time as this. Whether you're in this in the family you are today for such a time as this. Whether you're in the church where you are for such a time as this. Who knows whether you are here for such a time as this. Each time, you know, quick advice, each time you pick a, any positive thing in life, apply it immediately. Each time you pick, as a Christian, as a woman, anytime you pick something that is positive, apply it immediately. If you leave it for too long, you will flatten out like, you know, inflated balloon that has lost air. Apply what every positive thing you have picked in life, along your path of life, apply it, leading to your fulfilling purpose. Purpose is not something... You set out in life looking for. You're, you're searching under the bed and they ask you, what are you looking for? You say you're looking for purpose. You enter the street, what are you looking for? You said, I'm searching for purpose. Purpose, you don't set out in life looking for purpose. Romans 8, 28 to 30. Can I have it there so it will be fast for me? Romans 8, 20. I will show you why you don't set out in life searching for purpose. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. 30. Moreover whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, this he also glorified. You're not searching for purpose. You came out with purpose. Purpose is already in you. It's not what you go. The Bible said your predest is he predestined. Whom he has called, he has already planned. He has already, he knows. You remember that song that said, and destiny changer. I remember when Pastor told us we shouldn't be saying destiny. It's destiny helper. Because your destiny in God is already there. 
your, 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 it's not going to be changed. He can only help you to attain destiny. Purpose is in you. You're not searching for purpose. It's already in existence. Inside of you. But what has happened over time, over years, over situation is that life, situations, time, society, environment, and a lot of other external things had managed to knowingly or unknowingly suppress or force underground the purpose. Because the purpose has been forced underground or suppressed. That's why we say we are searching for purpose. We came out, God has already put purpose in us as we are coming out. Friends, society, family, we chase people, chase after people. And then the people we listen to, the association we keep, all these things impact our purpose in life negatively or positively. Our anchor scripture, the Proverbs 31, woman, through her relationships, this woman was able to attain life purpose. Through her service to those she was in relationship with, through her service to God, to her husband, to her children, to her family, household, to the society. If you look at that scripture, everything is whole, is complete. Relationship with everybody is complete in Proverbs 31, woman. Your purpose, therefore, is located in service. The Proverbs 31, woman fulfilled purpose in serving other in her service. Your purpose is located in your service. Without purpose, our lives will move in circles like a children of Israel going round and round the um, wilderness for 40 years until God told them, you have compassed this mountain long enough. Now move forward. If we don't know, if we don't Live a purposeful life. We will be going round and round. Round and round. Round and round. May that not be a portion in Jesus name. So what am I saying this morning? The uncommon woman is service oriented. Your success and happiness in life. Does not come with visualizing it or dreaming it. It doesn't even come with the success story of another person. It's not when you hear another person's success story that your own will become successful. It is about you building a pathway to personal rediscovery through service. Your every relationship needs to be serviced. And the uncommon woman will service every relationship around her to the degree of the need of that particular relationship. So you cannot be in a family or like we are in a church or in your workplace or in a home or in an environment and then you're not contributing anything. That's why people go round and round, round and round. If you're in a place at home, at place of work, in church, in your environment, there has to be something you're contributing. There has to be a service you are rendering. Unlock who you really are through service. And you will soon start experiencing success starting from within. You know, there are certain things you do. There is joy from within you. How should we go about this? How do I start? What are those things that gives you some level of maybe emotional frustration? 
something that gives you emotional frustration? And then, have you ever helped somebody handle such situations? The same situation that is giving you emotional frustration, you've helped somebody to solve his or her own situation, the same emotional frustration you're going through. And do you derive joy when you see that somebody you have helped has come out of that situation? That's where to start fulfilling purpose through service. Uncommon woman, I'm begging us this morning, including me that is talking here, let us bend down and bend low. Let us look around. We will see areas of service. We will see places of service. We will see where we can serve. That will help us rediscover purpose. I'm not saying discover because remember purpose is already existing. You rediscover purpose through service. But you cannot serve when you have not bent down to find out where, which area will I be purposeful? Which area can I be serviceable? Our model, the Proverbs 31 woman built relationships. She built home. She built economy. All of them working hand in hand, like I said earlier. She did not leave any part, portion. She didn't leave her children to concentrate on her career. She didn't leave her husband to concentrate on her children. She didn't leave the household to do every other thing. Let me, I'm a businesswoman. I'm, I'm bringing in money. She was wholesome. She was intentional. She was into it all, working hand in. And I've heard it said severally, and I believe it. They say women are multitasking, and it's very true. Some are very busy concentrating on one area, building economy, building career, building beautiful house. Well done. These are very good things. But then, they leave the children unbuilt. We are building a lot of every other area and they are not building the children. But you know, the painful thing is that tomorrow, those, they built houses, beautiful homes, beautiful this career, beautiful everything, an unbuilt child will run that thing that you have not, the child that you refuse to build, that unbuilt child will grow, will become the person to run those beautiful things you have built. So what will be the outcome of those things? If you ask, if you doubt me, go and ask Solomon. When Solomon was about to exit and Rehoboam took over, within a short while, before he even started reigning, he lost 10 out of 12 kingdoms handed over to him by his father. An unbuilt child. Build your career, build your home, build your child. So that tomorrow you will not cry over that child. Build your child to know God for himself. Each time I have opportunity to talk about children, to talk about to mothers, I have always said this from this pulpit. Help your children to know God for themselves. These things they are following us to church. Thank God they are following us to church. Do they know God for themselves? That is where to start building a child. Get your child to know the difference between wrong and good. And get that child to know that thing very early in life. These days, before a lot of times, by the time these children are finishing, some of them from secondary school, They've, before now, it used to be university in Nigeria. These days, it's no longer it's, it's, it's casting concrete like that. A lot of them, once they are finishing for secondary school, 
you're sending them outside your immediate environment. That unbuilt child, how will he, how will she live her life where you're sending her to? That unbuilt child that is in, even in Nigerian university here, how is that child? Can you vouch for how your child is living his or her life in campus? Can you even vouch for how they are living their lives even in, the sec in secondary school? An unbuilt child. The Bible even said that a child, a, a, a child you don't train well will be said to bring, how did the Bible tell it um, to the mother? It's shame to the mother. It's the mother first too, before the father. An unbuilt child will make you cry. What are we doing with those children that God has put in our hands? How are we helping them to grow? The things happening out there in the society is horrible. And these are the places where our children live. These are their friends. These are people, their classmates. These are places, people they relate with. How are we training the children that will relate with the world out there? Build your home. Build your career. But also build your children. Praise the Lord. Uncommon woman for me, for you this morning, in marriage, before you make that wrong move, ask yourself several questions. Before you make a wrong move, ask yourself questions. Forget all these things you see on social media. People see cancel, marriage cancel from people that have never met you. They don't know your particular situation. They don't know what you're going through. They don't know how you started. And these are the people advising you. And you, I cannot take that from any man. And then you will see it on social media. Okay, this, uh, you, you know, I, some of these prank things they do. The first thing you will hear from them is my friend. What will my friends say if they see I'm riding this type of car? What will my friends say if they see my wedding is not expensive? What will my friends say if they see my dress is not it's cheap? What will my friends say if they see you did not buy me gift? Friends, 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 friends. Forgetting that at a particular time in life, all those friends won't mean anything to you any longer. You are running alone. Before you make a wrong move in marriage, ask yourself several questions. You make that wrong move, your spouse makes one wrong move, the devil takes over. I'm telling you. You don't need to tell him, devil, come. Just make one wrong move. Your husband or your, sp your wife makes that wrong move, the devil takes over. And it becomes a struggle. Ask yourself several questions. There have been questions I asked myself and I will write it down. At times when they ask you what caused this problem between you and your husband, do you know you may not, you can't even say it again. Because it's, it's, no long, it's not important. But we started here, we have reached Aboju quarreling. And then we forgot what started it. And then we have God forbid, handed that thing over to the devil. He continues. He continues. You, when you sit down to yourself and ask yourself a question, what happened to me? You will be looking around. There is no answer. Do not give room to the devil in your marriage on common woman. Ask yourself questions every time. The uncommon woman, take responsibility for everything in your life, including your relationship with God, especially that. Stop passing responsibility to someone else. Hey, it's because of this person I'm not a good Christian. It's because of my husband. He doesn't even pray. I'm the only one praying, so I have stopped praying. Uh, my husband doesn't come to church every time. I'm the only one coming to church, so I have stopped coming. Stop blaming. 
take responsibility, especially for your spiritual life. Nobody would take that responsibility for you. And women, let's stop being the victim. Having, uh, stop allowing the devil to put that badge of victim mentality on you. I'm, um, I'm the victim. Everybody, uh, they're all against me. Um, it's me. It's me. I'm the only one, you know. Devil puts that and um, magnifies what does not exist. Know that you cannot possibly control everything that happens around you. You are not even equipped to control everything that happens around you. You can't. But you can take care of your own space. What happens within your own space? Our model, Proverbs 31 woman, the Bible talks about what she does to her household uh, in snow during winter. She doesn't have control over winter. But she can control what happens in her household. And that's the area she took interest. She didn't go out to say winter, stop. Snow, stop. Rain, stop. Hamatan, stop. He, heat, there is so much heat these days. You tell the sun, stop. The heat is too much. You cannot control the sun, but you can control what happens in your own space. Cover, you take care of yourself. You're going out, you wear your sun shades, or you take an umbrella. It's not the sun that should be blamed. It's what you do without, within your space. You cannot control everything around you, but you can control what happens within your own space. Uncontrollable circumstances happen every time. Times change, things change, things, and they keep coming, but take care of what happens within your own space. Most times in life, we, especially we women, we tend to depend on externals for our internal well-being. In recent times, I've learned a lot of lessons. It's, it's not the external that will make your heart peaceful. It's not a external. It's what comes from within you that will even make your environment peaceful. We blame ourselves for what is not really our making. You've done all you could do and something goes wrong and you're blaming yourself. You've done it all that you know to do on a particular situation and something is not really um, coming up well. And then you've checked yourself, I've done everything, but then you keep blaming yourself. It's because of me that this happened. It's because of me that this happened. Stop blaming yourself for what is not really your making. You cannot advance beyond the point you stopped in life. You know what happens with that blame game? It's me, it's me, it's me. Before you know it, you are stationed there. You cannot move forward. You cannot advance. You cannot take decisions because you are there blaming yourself. And the devil likes it so. Deal with your fear and so that you can have an edge over the devil. It's not you. Search yourself very well. It's not because of you. It's, you're not to blame. If your area that you need to blame, you ask God, please forgive me. I did this thing wrong and I got it wrong. Have mercy on me. And God forgives you and you move on. Don't let the devil pin you where God has forgiven you. You will not advance that way. Remember, God places us in communities, in relationships, like we have seen from our Proverbs 20, 31 woman. At times, you must let go of some relationships to, so as you can attain to purpose. At other times, you hold some relationships loosely. The and then there are some relationships that you hold closely. You determine, I will not be the one to determine 
that for you. But I know that the Proverbs 31 woman held her relationship with God very firmly. And her relationship with her family. No matter the relationship you have, whether it's your family, whether it's with God, whether it's with your husband, your children, your church family, wherever, I know that every relationship has its boundary. Every relationship has a boundary. Let's respect boundaries in relationships. How do I know? The Bible in Psalm 100 verse 4 told us how to come before God. Psalm 100 verse 4. He said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That's the stepping. If you're coming, that's a boundary. You're coming to God. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. You know, that's the first stepping. You don't bump your head, God, you know. And over time... Um, we've learned here how to relate with God, how to worship God, how to pray and stuff. And then when you, how to pray, even Matthew 6, that what we call our Lord's Prayer, tells us how to approach God in prayer. Boundary. So every relationship has its boundary. Recognize these boundaries and respect these boundaries. They are necessary. Stop tying relationships around your waist. You know, um, especially I think women, we are guilty of this. This is a relationship. And you are using rope to tie relationship around your waist. And you're holding on to it. And you're, this is an iron ball. Iron ball. You know how heavy it can be. And you're tying it around your waist. Relationship. You're dragging it. You're dragging it. You, in, the, instead of you to make 10 steps, you make two because of what you're tying around your waist. Stop holding on to relationships. Some that you should let go, let them go. Some that you should hold loosely, you let loose. Some, stop tying it. Stop holding strongly because you're not God. Jesus died for all of us. It's not you. You, things you can do, you do. The ones you cannot handle, you're handling. Do you know what happens? That person you're tying around your waist, you are not advancing. The person is not advancing. You're not helping yourself. You're not helping the person you think you're helping. Because you're holding on to strongly what you should live or what you should hold on to loosely. Recognize boundaries in relationships. Rediscover yourself, we have said, through service. Esther did. Who knows if you are here for such a time as this. Esther rediscovered purpose through service. Ruth did. Serving her mother-in-law through her serving, taking care of her mother-in-law and through service to her mother-in-law, she attained her purpose. Rahab did. She took care of the two spies Joshua sent. And through that service, she was able to serve herself and serve her entire household. And eventually, she is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Even Ruth in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Through service, you discover purpose. You rediscover your purpose. In Mark chapter 14, from 3 to 9 or thereabout, I won't read. The woman with the alabaster box of ointment rediscovered purpose. Even Jesus himself said, She has done what she could. She has done what she could. Where is that area of service for you? Have you done what you could? Are you doing what you could? That area of service is what will help you attain purpose. 
And Jesus told them something. He said, this thing that this woman has done today will be a memorial for her. Everywhere this gospel is preached, she will be mentioned. Until today we read her up. She attained her purpose through service. Where is your service? Have you done what you could? Are you doing what you could? Separate yourself from obstacles. Break loose, break free, break forth. Forcefully advance, forcefully cut yourself loose from these things that are holding you down so that you'll be intentional. Refuse to be held down. The Proverbs that one woman had will have reasons to be held down. She said, no, you will not hold me down. The women we have mentioned, Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Fear would have held her down. Ruth would have said, how can I go to a strange country? Rehab would have said, how will I be sure that when you people come, you will help me? I beg, I will not do it. But these women held on. The woman with the alabaster box of ointment would have said, this ointment is very expensive. If I, uh, this is my life savings, how will I get it back? All in service, they got purpose. Where is your place of service? How do you want to attain purpose? Have you searched out a place of service? The uncommon woman is energetic. She is energetic. Claim the ownership of your life. Take it back from circumstances. Take it back from situations. Take it back from those things that are holding you, that are pulling you. Take it back even from the iron ball you're pulling along life. Drop the iron ball so I can run freely in life. Uncommon woman, hand over your life to God. And keep it there. Don't take it back again. Take your life by yourself. Put it in the hands of God. And leave it there. And remember what I have said. The sum of it all is serve. Uncommon woman, serve. In your life, make sure you are serving. Jesus said he has come. To serve, even our master Jesus came to serve and not to be served. He said he came to serve. If our master came to serve, who are we? Jesus, the reason why we are gathered here this morning, said he came to serve. Who are we not to serve? Praise the name of Jesus. May we rise. May we rise. I don't know what area of prayer I have to offer, but I want you to pray for yourself. Remember, you're not searching for purpose. Your purpose is within you. You're not looking for purpose under the bed, under the chair. How can you serve? Where is your area of service? That is where you can find purpose. Just use one minute to pray for yourself. Commit yourself into the hands of God. Put your lives in the hands of God. And please, when you put your life there, don't take it back. Don't take it from God. He is the Almighty. He's the one that will direct. He's the one that knows. He's the one that will tell you even the next step to take in life. Father, we live our lives into your, unto you. We put our lives in your hands. As women, as men, as young people, as children. Lord, behold your children. Our lives are in your hands. We want to fulfill purpose. We don't want to run through life purposeless. 
We don't want to run through life empty. I personally do not want to run through life empty. Father, our lives are in your hands. Here we are. We give our lives back unto you. Where we took our lives in the past, Father, we say, please forgive. Take it back. Take it back. Use it. You are the potter where the clay. Father, break me, mold me, form me into who you want me to be. That which you have planned from beginning, form me into that. This is our heart cry. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord. We honor you. Let your name be exalted forever. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.